Nou kijk, een baie belangrike onderwerp is natuurlijk geestesgezondheid. En volgens gesels ons oor die Cape Town Kite Festival pop-up fly wat sondag 9, 9 oktober plaasvind. En dit is by Melkbos Strand. En vir bewismaking en om meer te gesels oor die Cape Town pop-up fly praat ons volgend met Dr. Ingrid Daniels van die Cape Mental Health. Good morning, Dr. Ingrid. Hello, good morning, Jennifer, to you and Pierre, and to all of your wonderful viewers. It's wonderful to be part of your program this morning. Uh, we are so excited because the Cape Town Kite Festival returns in 2022, and it's to encourage children and the youth and anyone that's young at heart, obviously, to fly a kite for mental health awareness. So I want to know how important is it to currently speak about mental health and mental health awareness, especially after people have endured COVID-19 and pandemic? Yes, absolutely, Jennifer. You know, the COVID-19 pandemic has had a horrendous impact um, on, on all of us to some extent, but more specifically, we are concerned about the impact it's had on our children mm -hmm. and our young people. As we know, it has complicated their lives in so many respects. Um, we saw in the initial phase of the pandemic disrupted schooling. We've also seen the social determinants of mental illness increase, such as poverty, food scarcity, violence, and many of these. Wow. And we've seen an increase in depression and, and, and anxiety amongst our young people. So this Kite Festival is really very important to talk about mental health, mental well-being, um, and how we can protect our children and young people and ourselves to that extent. So it's a wonderful opportunity to have the conversations. Dr. Ingrid, do you think there's still a bit of a stigma um, when it comes to mental health, where people are still a bit shy to speak about it openly? Yes, absolutely. Stigma and discrimination is still very much, uh, you know, apparent. However, the COVID-19 pandemic has allowed many of us to talk about our mental health. Um, it's become um, an easier conversation because we've seen how this pandemic has impacted on the mental health of everyone um, in various degrees and in various forms. But stigma and discrimination still exists, and this prevents our young people from coming out and talking about, you know, the challenges that they are facing today. Dr. Ingrid, this will be, uh, I think, 28 years that the Cape, that Cape Mental Health has hosted the Kite Fly pop-up. Uh, uh, tell us more about Cape Mental Health. It, it's one of the oldest organisations in South Africa. Yes, it is indeed. Cape Mental Health is the oldest community-based mental health organisation in South Africa, and we provide mental health services at no cost to communities. So the Kite Festival is really very important because we can raise awareness about mental health, about mental well-being, but also to raise much needed funds to provide the services that we uh, we offer in um, dire and resource poor communities. So it's a wonderful event and it's the largest kite kiting event on the continent and we host this every year obviously the pandemic has had an impact on how we host it so um we've decided we'll have these hybrid events and we're going to have it this year at Melbourne Sports strand and it's going to be a wonderful day it's going to be lovely enjoying the day at Melbourne strand but it's all going to be to, uh, to get funds for cape mental health tell us a bit about cape mental health's plans, essentially, which is essentially giving free uh, mental health uh, treatment to people who are really in dire need. Uh, what is the treatment structure and, and, and the support system at this stage like? Uh, are there enough support uh, systems? Are there enough people uh, being, being, being helped through their difficult circumstances at this stage, do you think? Well, you know, appear up to 95% of South Africans have no access to mental health care, mainly because it's not um, widely spread in all communities and also uh, private mental health care is very expensive. So 95% of South Africans have no access and Cape Mental Health's role is to be in these communities to provide free counselling services um, to youth and adults and children as well. And uh, we have a 
team of social workers, they are our mo mobile social work teams, we go into the communities, but we also have specific projects such as our psychosocial rehabilitation, which is community-based interventions. We provide uh, training and skills development centers for children, uh, for, for adults, youth and adults with intellectual disabilities, and then more specifically for children um, with severe and profound intellectual disabilities within their communities, we provide education and care. We also have a program called Youth Matters, where we provide mental health services within schools as a preventative, but also as an intervention uh, program for, for young, for basically our youth and our learners at senior schools. And so the programs are quite diverse um, in its, in, in its um, interventions, but um, it's free of charge, it's at no cost, and we really invite people to contact us. It's, it's available, it's a con confidential counselling service that we provide, as I said, within the communities, and um, we, we're really there to provide a safety net, and we encourage people to contact us. You don't have to carry this burden on your own. We are available. You refer to the fact that your program is very diverse, but I think that's one of the critical elements of something like this, that it, it has to be inclusive, and you are including everyone with mental health uh, conditions. Uh, yeah. That is one of the, the basics of the program, isn't it? Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, it's an inclusive service. So in, in other words, we provide this at a community level, but also not only the individual, but the entire family mm. gets access to the service, as I said. Um, and it's different for different people. So for, for children and adults with um, intellectual disabilities, the programs are designed to support them, um, mainly with education, skills development, and access to employment, access to living normal and integrated lives within their communities. The same applies to people um, with a mental health condition. Um, young people into adulthood, we provide the psychosocial um, rehabilitation support groups, and then we have two programs called Fountain House, and those are the only two of its kind in South Africa. Um, and it's really to, to provide at a community level, that where people should be receiving treatment. Mm, yes. You know, you only go to hospital when you're ill, but the for the rest of the time you live in your family, you live in your community, and that is our focus, to ensure that they are supported, that they're fully integrated, and that they have a recovery plan and journey so that they can live uh, normal and integrated lives within their families' homes and to make a contribution not only to their families but their communities and our country at large. Wow. Dr. Ingrid, you did mention some of the things, but what impact does it have when we neglect the mental health of our youth going forward into adulthood? Yeah, it, it has a significant impact. Um, we have limited and insufficient child and adolescent mental health uh, support or services for that matter. And we know that children and adolescents, when they've not had the necessary foundation to support their mental health, it has implications for how they navigate into adulthood. Prioritizing child and adolescent mental health is of critical importance. And because there's been such negligence in this area, it has actually perpetuated the crisis as such. Um, you know, the World Health Organization has states uh, has stated that this lack of access has implications for uh, mental disorders, but also impacts on how young people would um, journey through into adulthood. And we are very concerned about this. Without creating the necessary, or without this foundation, the strong mental health foundation, um, our young people are going to have challenges successfully navigating into adulthood. They're going to have challenges with education, employment, social Socializing and just living normal, integrated lives. So um, it's of critical importance that we invest in mental health. It not only has economic consequences for the individual and the families, but it has economic consequences for um, the country at large. We know that for every $1 invested in mental health, there's a $4 return. So there's a wow. return on investment with the necessary interventions that required. A further point is that 
a substantial proportion of mental disorders um, that we see in adulthood has its origins in childhood. More than 50% of mental disorders in adulthood has its origin even before the age of 14 years old. Sure. Wow, that's very interesting. And I think that's why it is so important that there is something like the Cape Town Kite Festival just to create awareness around mental health. Now, this year's theme is Fly Your Dreams. Why is that relevant? You know, it's a wonderful thing. You have to agree with me. Um, youth, our dreams, our dreams begin in our youth. You have to agree with me. I remember when I was young, dreaming of what I want to become, where I want to go, who I want to meet. And, and so fly your dreams for us is a message of hope, of optimism, of courage, of bravery, and aspirations and it's a wonderful thing because when our young people see these kites and you look up you have to look up and you know the wonderful thing about kite flying it soars against adverse winds mm. and you're anchored with your feet solidly on the ground and you have to look up so fly your dreams you want to tell our young people that there are opportunities and they have abilities and the wonderful thing about children and adolescents is that they are resilient despite you know and so the kite festival is this moment in time for all of us young old anyone in between to just really take time out and focus on the importance of our mental health and our mental well-being oh wow that's wonderful and that kite festival is obviously taking place this sunday the 9th of october Dr. Ingrid, thank you so much for speaking to us today about mental health, mental health awareness, and also about the Cape Town Kite Festival. Thank you so much for having me here, and I'm inviting everyone to join us on Saturday, the 9th of October, at the beautiful Malpo Strand with the Table Mountain as backdrop and the skies will be decorated with the most beautiful kites. Please come out. The weather's going to be good, and we look forward to everyone having good day looking after their mental health. Mental health is everyone's business and mental health is the nation's wealth. Thank you so much for having us this morning. Oh, wow. Daar het jy dit 9 Oktober. Dis waar jy met wees, Melkbos Straat.